Hey everybody, welcome back. Just a few quick points about Afghanistan and what's been going on there. I know, you've heard it all. You've been getting hit from all sides with all kinds of crazy points, but I've got a few points of my own. Maybe a few things that haven't been addressed or haven't been thought about even. We'll see. Before I get flying here, I wanted to give a shout out to David, not me David, a different David, for reaching out and helping out the channel. I do appreciate that a lot. Thank you very much. So, what's the point? Why the failure? Aside from the fact that we probably never should have been there in the first place, never should have gotten involved, wasted our time, wasted resources, the government wasted our money that they took from us by way of taxes and just spent and spent and spent and wasted their time. Well, there's a lot to be thought about there. And one of the points I'm going to go to, if you've been watching long enough, you know I've brought this up a few times, and that's the philosophical difference. The difference between rational, logical thought, which is the Western way of thinking, and analogical thought, which is how they often think in the Middle East and in Asia, which is why concepts, they don't rub together very well between Western thinking and Asian and Middle Eastern thinking. The, the analogical thought process and the rational, logical thought process, they don't even up. And it's difficult to get people to understand how that works because, for one thing, most people suck at philosophy. They, they, when I remember when I was in college in philosophy, I did very well, but pretty much the entire rest of the class barely passed. Barely. And it's because they just don't, they're not allowing themselves to understand the concepts. You have to be able to put yourself in the position of, okay, that doesn't make sense to me, but I can see where someone else would think this way. And one of the best examples that I give is about kamikaze pilots. If you remember World War II, the Japanese would crash their planes when they ran out of ammo. That makes no sense because in a rational, logical thought process, you sit there and say, why waste the plane? Why waste your life? Go back. Go back. Live to fight another day. In their thought process, they would rather embarrass you than live. So it's a humiliation for them to crash their plane into, into your ship or into the ground or wherever. It's humiliating the enemy. To you, that makes no sense. But in an analogical thought process, it makes a lot of sense. And Afghanistan falls into this category. They've got thousands of years of culture. Okay? And tribalism which is often tied into analogical thought process, especially in the Middle East. Thousands of years of culture, and we're supposed to assume that it's going to be erased in a short 20 years because the U.S. offered them some bangles and baubles. Ah, uh, come, my little Smurfs. We're through with this wizard. Wait! I'll give you these nice beads for them. I'll throw in these baubles and, and, and some brand new bangles. No deal, Gargamel. It doesn't make any sense. And they don't want your junk. This, this thing, that this stigma with Western government that the leaders think that if you give away enough free stuff, people will worship them. That's why we got stimulus checks. They like to buy you off. They like to give you things. And sure, they'll take it. The Afghani people and government that was in place, oh, they'll take all the free stuff you can give them. But they're not going to believe your concepts. They're not going to trust you. So the moment that it looked like we were leaving, because there was only like, what, 2,500 uh, military personnel left there? That was enough to destabilize them enough that they didn't try to take over, they were like, well, West has a presence, let's not screw it up. The moment that they started to leave, that was it, and it took what, 72 hours? 72 hours for the Taliban to take over. Just like that. Why? Because the people let them do it. And there is some protesting going on, and they're squashing the crap out of it, which is to be expected, because that's the type of government they that they have. They don't want to be westernized. Not everybody wants to be westernized. Not everybody wants the West's phony democracy. This, we're going to bring democracy to the rest of the world, and we don't really have it here. Because it's an illusion. They lie to us, and then they take it somewhere else and present the same lie, and they're supposed to trust it? <laughs> Think about that. 
And and not only that, but the like I said, the arrogance of the of the idea that in just a couple of short decades, yeah, we're going to convert this country and we're going to bring them democracy and the right to vote and all these rights and this and that, all these rights that they can't control here on our own doorstep. You know, there's an old adage that not to complain about your neighbor's yard until you clean yours up. <laughs> our yard is pretty freaking dirty, and not all American people do this. This is something if you're if you happen to be in the Middle East watching this, not very likely, but if you are, keep in mind that the American people, we don't care. Real American people, the average people, we don't want to get involved in your politics. We don't care what you're doing as long as you don't bring it here and mess us up. As long as you're not causing us problems. It's the government and companies that have special interests that are forcing the issues. And that I bring that up because, unfortunately, whenever there's a terrorist attack, what do they do? They attack the civilian population who has zero to do with whatever you think your problems are. It's quite unfortunate. But, again, analogical thought process, tribalism, thousands of years of a system that they're comfortable with, and we come over and disrupt it because we're going to fix everything because you're doing it wrong, buddy. Yeah. And we can't get it right here. Our government doesn't do it right, screws its own people over, takes advantage of its own people, taxes the crap out of them, misappropriates the money, misuses it, misspends it, makes all kinds of dirty deals, uh, acts like they're squeaky clean and they are filthy. But, yeah, they're supposed to trust a government that does this to its own people because they're going to bring them democracy. They don't want it. They don't want it. <laughs> what, are you, what are you going to do? And, uh, yeah, the, the planes, I mean, they're really emphasizing. I just wanted to touch on this really quickly. Uh, where do you think those people are going to end up? I put up a, a little meme about that. It's like, where do you think a picture of the uh, spirit flights? Where do you think those people are going to go? Uh, uh, are there any states yet or any elected officials volunteering on behalf of their state as if they speak for everyone? Oh, yeah, bring them here. We love them. Can you really trust that? Somebody got mad at me for uh, posting that picture. I was just posing a legitimate question. Where are they going to go? Asking people, where do you think they're going to end up? Just curious, because you don't really know who's on that plane. How many women did you see in that picture? Think about it. Think about that. Be, um, and Somebody accused me of being hateful for that. Oh, you're hating on these people. Am I? I asked a legitimate question. You don't know who's on that plane any more than I do. Or what the intentions are. They could be decent people. They could be a bunch of plants. And we'll find out when it's too late. <laughs> as, as is usually the case. Keep in mind that one of the... Uh, I can't remember the name of the guy. I probably couldn't pronounce it anyways. One of the people that Obama traded for that... Uh, what is his name? Bengdahl or Bergdahl, that soldier, the, the defector that he traded for, is a Taliban leader now. Great choice, uh, Obama. <laughs> so you never know who you're dealing with until it's too late, unfortunately. Thoughts about that? Does anybody get where I'm what I'm talking about here, where I'm coming from with the tribalism and the analogical thought process? How come people in government are making millions and millions of dollars to analyze these things and do this research and work out all these negotiations and they don't understand it. Or maybe they do and they just don't care. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. Uh, thoughts? I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Go ahead and post them in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you get where I'm coming from. I hope you do. Share the video if you can, probably the only way it'll get seen. ScrewTube hates this channel. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos if you haven't. What can I say? Or what more can I say? But stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come.